Volvocom presents The Czech Republic Welcome on our journey around the Czech Republic, a country located within the very heart of Europe. The Czech Republic is a land small in extent, but with a history going back more than a thousand years. Thanks to its rich history, the Czech Republic has become a veritable tourist paradise. In its attractive landscape, one can find everything. Beautiful sights, lovely countrysides, and nature preserves. After the 1989 Velvet Revolution and the division of Czechoslovakia in 1993, the Czech Republic emerged as an independent country. The new democratic state is presently trying to integrate in a united Europe and its structures, such as the European Union and NATO. This country, with its old traditions, offers unique experiences to tourists. Among the sites worth visiting are its world-renowned spas, offering curative procedures. Castles and palaces hundreds of years old in various architectural styles, many of which have become famous, with a notable place in the history books. To this day, they recall the past glory of the Czech state. Furthermore, the country offers its natural wealth, its national parks and nature preserves, as well as tourist attractions. We begin our wanderings in Prague, our country's capital. Prague is the country's cultural, economic and historical center. Surely the words it has put in its emblem, Prague, mother of cities, are appropriate. Ever since its founding, it has always played an important role in the country's history and was always the center of the state as well as the heart of its economic and cultural life. Since the Middle Ages, it has had the reputation of one of the world's most beautiful cities and it has been given the attributes of golden and hundred towered. We will begin our sightseeing tour of Prague at the Prague Castle. Prague Castle, the ancient residence of the Czech kings, is the symbol of Czech sovereignty. Today it is the seat of its president. The main part of this unique complex of buildings starts at the second courtyard of the castle with a Baroque fountain at its center and the interesting chapel of the Holy Cross. The dominant feature of the third courtyard and of the castle as a whole is the Cathedral of St. Vitus with its triple nave founded in 1344 by King Charles IV. The cathedral was the site of the coronations of the Czech kings and it is the place where the crown jewels are kept. The cathedral's construction continued over several historical periods. The first builders were Matthias of Arras and Peter Parler. Construction continued also in later periods and was not fully completed until 1929. Not far from the third courtyard stands the Basilica of St. George with its two white towers. Today it is used as a concert hall for old church music. Golden Lane is among the most frequently visited places at the Prague Castle. Legend has it that in the time of Rudolf II, alchemists used to live and work here. Nowadays, Golden Lane is a tourist paradise. At the end of Golden Lane stands the tower named Daliborka, part of the late Gothic fortifications. It is called thus because of its first prisoner, a knight named Dalibor of Kozoyedi. The castle gardens, Royal, Ambrosial, Waldstein, and on the ramparts provide a pleasant place for repose in the spring and summer months. The Renaissance-style villa in the Royal Garden was built by King Ferdinand I in the 16th century. The singing fountain got its name from the sounds that it produces when the water droplets fall onto its metal surface. The old palace stairway is today a place where the past meets the present. Not far from Prague Castle is located the massive Chernin Palace, which today houses the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The 
the Baroque church called Loretta protects the famous Loretta treasure, the Loretta chimes, and other objects of interest. The steep Neruda Street, the Lesser Quarters Artery, is lined with houses built in the Renaissance and Baroque styles. Among the better known ones is, for example, the House of the Three Violins. The dominating feature of the Lesser Quarter is the Church of St. Nicholas. One of the most interesting places in Prague is Charles Bridge, a unique historical site. It is named after the famous Czech king, Charles IV. The bridge is decorated with 30 Baroque statues and sculptural groups from prominent Baroque sculptors. The bridge ends at the Old Town Bridge Tower, near the neo-Gothic statue of Charles IV. The center of Prague's Old Town is the Old Town Square, dominated by the Old Town City Hall. The rare late Gothic astronomical clock is the work of Master Hanusz of Rouge from 1410. The astronomical clock consists of a calendar with the emblem of the Old Town, a circular sphere measuring time, and a puppet display featuring the apostles. Every hour, thousands of visitors gather to watch the astronomical clock. A second dominant feature of the square is the Teen Church of the Virgin. The House of the Stone Bell is among the most exquisite Gothic buildings. At the center of the square you will see the Jan Hus Monument. Another exquisite building is the Baroque-style Church of St. Nicholas. A few minutes walk from the Old Town Square will take us to the Old Jewish Cemetery with interesting synagogues in its vicinity. The Jewish Cemetery comprises more than 12,000 tombstones. The Prague Jewish Cemetery is one of the most memorable places in the world. Wenceslas Square used to be a marketplace where horses were bought and sold, and it retained the name Horse Market until the 19th century. Thanks to its central location, it has become the central artery of contemporary Prague. In the background, we can see the National Museum, housing valuable collections from a series of scientific disciplines. The massive monument of St. Wenceslas is the work of Josef Václav Misselbeck from 1912. Of special importance for the Czech nation is the Neo-Renaissance National Theater, rebuilt after a fire in the second half of the 19th century, thanks to volunteer contributions of the entire nation. Vyšehrad originated probably in the second half of the 10th century. For a short period of time, it became the main seat of the Przemyslet princes. Till today, it is the focus of many myths and legends. The Renaissance-style star villa recalls the Battle of the White Mountain in 1620, which for 300 years had a fateful impact on the destinies of the nation and of the country. Interesting buildings are to be seen even outside of the city core, such as, for example, the Zbraslav Palace. Only 50 kilometers from Prague lies the spa town of Podjebrady. Dominating the square is the statue of King George of Podjebrady. Podjebrady is ideal as a place to relax. Beautifully maintained extensive parks in the vicinity of the colonnade, many decorative trees and therapeutic mineral springs create the atmosphere of the Podjebrady Spa. One of the touristic jewels of central Bohemia is the town of Kutná Hora, recently added to the list of UNESCO protected sites. One unique historical site that you cannot by any means omit from your itinerary is the Church of St. Barbara. The church was founded at the end of the 14th century by the Peter Power Foundry. It is named for the patron saint of miners, St. Barbara, 
excels in the beauty of its Gothic architecture and the furnishings of its interior. Not far from the temple, we can see a two-story Baroque building of the former Jesuit college and the Church of St. James, built in the first half of the 14th century. The counterpart of the church is the former royal residence and mint, the Italian court, where Czech tolars used to be minted. Another surviving monument is the late Gothic fountain from the workshop of Matthias of Rejsek. The monumental castle Karlstein is only a half hour's drive outside of Prague. Karlstein was built between 1348 and 1357 by the Czech king and emperor Charles IV as a place of safekeeping of the imperial crown jewels. The original castle was rebuilt in the Renaissance style at the end of the 16th century and at the end of the 19th century was regothicized. Tourists from all different parts of the world visit Karlstein the year round. The most valuable part of the castle interiors is the Chapel of the Holy Cross in the main tower. Amidst the dense Krivoklat forests lies Krivoklat, originally a hunting lodge of Czech princes and kings, converted into a Gothic-style castle in the mid-13th century. At the end of the 15th to 16th centuries, the castle was rebuilt once more in the Gothic Vladislav style, and it has retained this character substantially to this day. Without doubt, the castle chapel, with its unique altar from the late 15th century, is awe-inspiring. A permanent exhibition of late Gothic sculpture is housed in the King's Hall. The renowned Furstenberg Library in the Queen's Palace contains more than 50,000 books. Another commonly visited place in the environs of Prague is the Konopiste Chateau. It was bought by the Archduke Ferdinand d'Este, heir to the Austrian throne. The halls and staircases of the chateau are richly decorated with hunting trophies from all over the world. The Eston Armory offers a vast collection of Italian metalwork. Here you can also see a collection of richly decorated firearms, as well as hunting knives and oriental weapons. The halls and salons are furnished with the original period furniture and very precious collections of art. An important center of Western Bohemia is the town of Plzeň, the home of the world-renowned Pilsner beer. The historical center of Plzeň, comprising the main Republic Square and the adjacent streets, is an urban conservation zone. At the center of the square stands the Archdeacon's Church of St. Bartholomew, and a significant example of Gothic construction in Bohemia. The church was built in the first half of the 14th century and has the highest church spire in the Czech Republic. At the square and in its vicinity are to be seen Gothic, Baroque and Renaissance style buildings. If you are in Pilsen, don't miss a visit to the Pilsen Brewery. The Pilsen Brewery started its operations in 1842, and ever since the tradition of Pilsner Urquell brand has spread to the extent that today the whole world appreciates its quality. Thanks to the best raw materials, the Pilsner Lager has an exceptional and original taste. The brewing process has not changed over the years, and the recipe is a jealously guarded secret. As part of the tour, you can visit the historical cellars. You can sample the tastes of the traditional Czech beer produced at the Pilsner Brewery right on the brewery premises at the Nuspilce restaurant, 
which offers as many as 580 seats in an authentic atmosphere where you can get to know not just classical Czech cuisine, but also music. Another must-see is the Brewery Museum, the oldest museum of its kind anywhere, where you can learn from hundreds of exhibits how Pilsner beer used to be brewed and drunk. The top of the West Bohemian Spa Triangle is formed by Calo Vivare, a city of congresses, conferences, festivals, a city of prominent personalities, a city founded alongside the hot springs in the mid-14th century by King Charles IV. Carlo Vivari was named after its founder, Charles IV, and many well-known personalities used to visit the city in the past. Let us name Johann Wolfgang Goethe. Friedrich Schiller. Peter the Great. Ludwig van Beethoven. Beatrix Smetana. and Antonin Dvořák. Beautiful architecture, luxury hotels, sanatoria and parks produce a spa atmosphere that attracts guests from around the world. Attached to the spa buildings are also the spa colonnades, Mlinská, Dřevěná, Kamená and Vřídelní, designed by architects of world renown. Therapy for alimentary tract disorders and conditions affecting the metabolism is offered at several institutes. The comprehensive therapeutic tradition involves the use of 12 hot mineral springs with a temperature ranging from 30 to 72 degrees Celsius, with the strongest spring, Vřídlo, shooting up to a height of 10 to 15 meters from a depth of 2 to 3 kilometers. Among the architectural places of interest is the Church of Mary Magdalene and the Orthodox Church of St. Peter and St. Paul. The most beautiful spa in the world is how Thomas Alva Edison once described Marianske Lasnie. Marianske Lasnie is situated in a pristine environment in the midst of beautiful forests. Therapy is focused on kidney disorders, conditions affecting the metabolism, skin, joint and respiratory diseases. Some 40 mineral springs are available to patients, as well as mud baths and natural carbon dioxide. Millions of visitors have already walked through the Marianske Lasnie colonnade. The classical style pavilions were built above the Cross Spring, the Caroline Spring, and at Ferdinand Spring. The spa atmosphere is emphasized by a large number of fountains, the most famous of which is the Singing Fountain. The calm environment inspires the visitor to walk and to relax. The spa colonnades are surrounded by beautiful parks. A unique place of interest in the town is the Orthodox Church of St. Vladimir. The third and last peak of the spa triangle is Františkovilaznie, with its beautiful park spreading over an area of 250 hectares. 
strongly carbonated mineral water issues out of 24 springs. It made the spa famous particularly for curing gynecological conditions. Many neoclassical styles dating back to the time of the spa's construction still remain at Franciszko Vilaznie. This spa was founded in 1793 in the vicinity of Mineral Water Springs and was named for the Austro-Hungarian Emperor Franz II. The Glauber Springs Hall is a pearl of spa architecture. The best known statue in this spa is the little statue of the boy Franz with a fish, a symbol of fertility and also the contemporary city emblem. The westernmost town in the Czech Republic, situated not far from the border with Germany, is the city of Heb. In the town's historical core, a series of Gothic, Renaissance and Baroque style houses has been preserved. Of particular interest is the picturesque complex of 11 guild houses, known as Spalicek. It was Friedrich Barbarossa who ordered Heb Castle to be built in the 12th century at the location of a Slavonic fort. In the course of many centuries, the castle was rebuilt and fortified several times until it received the form it has today. The castle's most valuable structure is the dual castle chapel with an interesting interior arrangement in contrasting styles. With a glance at the lower gate, we enter Domažlice, the historical heart of Chocko. Originally, Domažlice was a customs outpost, with the town itself being founded in 1262 by King Przemysl Otakar II. Along the main square, the visitor can see a series of Gothic Renaissance and Baroque-style houses with well-preserved arcades and Baroque-style gables. The square is dominated by the Church of the Assumption of the Virgin. Many prominent Czech writers, ethnographers and composers used to live in Domažlice. The countryside around the South Bohemian district of Trevon gives the region a peculiar and quite unique character where all human activity retained its links with nature. The Trebon district consists of low-lying terrain where century-old green forests alternate with meadows and peat bogs within the romantic embrace of ponds such as for example Rosenberg, Sviet, Stankovsky and Bezdrev with their blue glistening surfaces. Besides the romantic nature, you can admire the beauty of folk architecture in the South Bohemian villages. The town of Trebon which dominates the entire area, is situated in the close vicinity of many ponds. It has a uniquely preserved ground plan and a whole series of Gothic and Renaissance style houses, particularly on its main square. The southwestern part is occupied by an extensive palace complex and a Renaissance style palace of the Rosenberg family. The castle comprises an extensive archive, one of the most valuable in Bohemia, as well as much furniture, rugs, paintings and weapons from the furnishings of the lords from Rosenberg. The center of southern Bohemia is the city of České Budějovice. One of the most prominent sites of České Budějovice is the five-story Black Tower, built for the town crier, with a belfry including a bell known as Bumrin. The historical core of the town surrounds the rectangular Przemysl Otakar II square. At the center of the square is the beautiful Samson Fountain, built in the first quarter of the 18th century. The Renaissance-style city hall, built in the mid-16th century, 
was rebuilt in the Baroque style. Experts consider it the second most beautiful administrative building from the Baroque period in Bohemia. The square and all of the principal adjacent streets are lined with well-preserved buildings with arcades, the extent of which has no equal anywhere in Central Europe. The Church of St. Nicholas, originally built in the 13th century in the Gothic style, acquired its present appearance after a Baroque-style reconstruction. Not far from the square are the Masne Krami, a pub that owes its name to Budvar, the beer brewed in Česká Budějovice. Český Krumlov, situated on the banks of the Vltava, is among the favored destinations of visitors to the Czech Republic. This is due in particular to the picturesque town center, which was completed architecturally already in the 16th century, and from that time has managed to escape any major reconstruction. On the square and the adjacent streets, time seems to have stopped. Walking through the town, you will feel the beauty and the perfection of the art of architecture of past centuries. The center of the town is on the UNESCO list of protected historical sites. The Deacon's Church of St. Vitus is among the most attractive examples of the Czech Gothic style. The town also comprises a castle and a palace from the mid-13th century. The oldest part of the palace is the so-called Lower Castle. The Gothic Upper Castle, with the Chapel of St. George, was expanded in the 16th century and rebuilt in the Renaissance style. Tabor is a city with a rich past, founded by the Hussites with their military leader, Jan Jiška, in 1420. At the time of the Hussite wars and military raids around Europe, Tabor used to be the center of the Taborite Military League. To this day, it retains its medieval character, with a series of prominent architectural elements. The main square is dominated by the Deacon's Church of the Transfiguration of the Lord from the middle of the 15th century. The Kotnov Castle Tower and the neighboring Bechinje Gate originally constituted parts of the town's fortifications. In recent years, these buildings have undergone renovations and now house the museum's collections. The town of Pisek was founded in the 13th century. The two banks of the Ottawa River are connected by the oldest stone bridge in Bohemia, dating from the second half of the 13th century. Remains of the town's fortifications, as well as a series of Gothic, Renaissance and Baroque-style houses, are still standing. Within the premises of the former Pisa Castle, now the town hall, is located the Prachen Museum, dedicated to the town's past and present. The Gothic-style Church of the Birth of the Virgin, to which a 71 meters high steeple was added, dates to the middle of the 13th century. Jindrichu Hradec, the town contains abundant and unique Gothic, Renaissance and Baroque-style monuments. The main square is dominated by an 18th century Baroque column. The largest Renaissance-style buildings are the Jesuit College and Seminary. Today it houses a museum. The palace next to the Vygar pond was originally a Romanist castle. 
later rebuilt in the Gothic style and then expanded in the Baroque style. A few kilometers to the north of České Budějovice, one can see from a distance a white spot, the Hluboká castle. This richly articulated castle arising out of the surrounding park has a fairy tale impact on visitors. Towers, turrets, bulwarks, balconies and pillars are precisely attuned in a romantic Windsor-style hall, today's form of an original royal castle. The interiors of this castle have been adapted in the Dutch Renaissance style. Extending around the castle is an English-style park and wildlife preserve. Taking a boat trip on the nearby Orlik Reservoir, your attention will be drawn to the exceptional structure of the Orlik Castle. This place was named in reference to its position on a high cliff overlooking the Vltava River, upon which it was perched like an eagle's nest. After the filling of the reservoir in 1963, when the river's water level rose by 60 meters, the castle found itself at the same level as the water surface. The form of the castle is due to its rebuilding in the neo-Gothic style in the middle of the 19th century, its owners being members of the Schwarzenberg noble family. The romantic Červenal Hota castle, surrounded by water, was modified in the Renaissance and Baroque styles in the 17th century. The castle is accessible by a bridge, guarded by a Baroque-style tower from 1641. The castle contains a collection of clocks, a set of original rugs, a set of tin utensils, ceramics and porcelain. The castle is also a popular destination for filmmakers. A series of films was made there, particularly fairy tales. Teplice is a spa, industrial and cultural center of northern Bohemia. Reminiscent of the past is the Renaissance-style palace and the Baroque-style deacon's church of St. John the Baptist. The curative effects of the local hot springs were known already in antiquity. The attractive spa buildings are used to treat patients. It is peculiar what nature has managed to create and how much extraordinary beauty it has generated in a small, single part of Hrensko, also known as the Czech Saxon Switzerland. Visitors can view 130 million year old natural formations from wooden decks since 1890. A calm ride along the Kamenice River, along the straits or on the lakes, with a guide providing explanations, is an unforgettable experience. You will also not want to miss the daring construction of the Falcon's Nest Hotel, built here at the end of the last century. The most beautiful part of the entire region is doubtless Pravicica Gate. With a view of the television tower atop Mount Dieschid, we welcome you to Liberec. Liberec is an important economic and cultural center. On the main square, everyone will be fascinated by the city's most beautiful building, the Neo-Renaissance Town Hall, built in 1888 to 1893. In the historical core of the town, the visitor can admire a series of empire and classical style townhouses. The North Bohemian Sichrov Castle is one of the most recent Czech castles. Originally a fortress, a series of adaptations resulted in its present form, which can be characterized as a romantic neo-Gothic. Mighty towers were erected, which were supposed to give the castle the look of an ancient feudal bastion. Today, visitors to the castle can learn about the lifestyle of the last inhabitants of the castle and view their rich artistic and historical collections. Of the interior, particularly impressive is the main hall with its monumental staircase.
The castle grounds are frequently used for nightly jousts and rides, conjuring up times long gone by. The economic and cultural center of eastern Bohemia is Hradec Králové. The center of the town's historical core is the triangular Jan Žižka Square. Particularly noteworthy is the Baroque Column of the Virgin at the center of the square from the first half of the 18th century. The square is exceptional due to the large number of churches, prominent among which is the Brick Cathedral of the Holy Ghost, founded by Queen Elizabeth in 1307. In the vicinity stands the Church of St. Clement with its white tower, 68 meters in height. Visitors can also admire the exquisite townhouses. Completing the complex of churches on the main square is the Church of the Assumption of the Virgin. Through the late Gothic Green Gate, we enter the town of Pardubice. Along with Hradec Králové, Pardubice is the most important city of Eastern Bohemia. The center of the attractive square is decorated by the Monument of the Virgin. The main square is lined with townhouses. Pardubice is inextricably associated with Pardubice gingerbread. The city of Yichin is one of the most attractive places in eastern Bohemia. To tourists, it is known as the entry point into the area of the Bohemian Paradise. On the main square, the late Gothic Valjitsa Gate has been preserved. Along the periphery of the main square are Renaissance, Baroque and Empire-style buildings with arcades. Petrified city of sandstone outcrops and a natural reservation, 187 hectares in area, is known as Prachov Cliffs. Natural forces have carved out from an ancient seabed some fantastic scenery, including towers, blocks, columns, chimneys, reminiscent of a veritable city, and offer ideal opportunities for hikes and rock climbing. Opochna is one of the most important Renaissance structures in Bohemia. The chateau has a courtyard, interesting in terms of its architecture, surrounded on three sides by a column arcade. There is a one-of-a-kind exposition of medieval firearms and hunting trophies. The interior of the chateau is one of the most valuable. Period furniture, porcelain tableware, as well as paintings by Italian and Dutch masters show the way of life of the nobility which resided here. Today, Opochno is one of the most important tourist attractions in eastern Bohemia. These mountains are the highest mountain range in the Czech Republic. They are a popular tourist destination due to their remarkable richness of natural beauties and due to their tourist resorts. The mountains are familiar in many parts of Europe thanks to the legends of a giant named Krakonosh. of mountain creeks and torrents can be admired in the giant mountains. The plants of the giant mountains are very rare. On a very small area we can discover here plants native to the lowlands, highland areas and mountains. These are rare species that cannot be found anywhere else in the world. There are perfect conditions for hiking in the highest Czech mountains. 
cyclotourism has become the modern form of sport self-realization in the mountains. Mountain ridges reach the height of 1200 to 1600 meters. Among the highest peaks are Studnichni Hora, Well Mountain, and Luchni Hora, Meadow Mountain, and Snieżka, with its height of 1,602 meters, is the highest mountain in the Czech Republic. Near Petspot Snieżko, there is a lowland station of the cableway to Snieżka. Ružová Hora, Pink Mountain, is the intermediate station of the cableway. We are going on by the cableway, and now we can admire the peak of Snieżka and the wonderful panorama of the giant mountains. In winter, the time for devotees of winter sports commences. Cross-country and downhill tracks, both racing and touristic, are prepared for them. Harachov, Spindlerów Mlin, Petspot Snieżko, or Rokitnice nad Jezero are the biggest ski centers. We can find conditioned downhill courses, ski towers, and cableways. cultural center is the town of Litomyshl, the birthplace of the composer Bedrich Smetana. The town is graced by a series of Renaissance and Empire style townhouses with arcades. The building of the former Pierist Grammar School now houses the city museum. In the vicinity of the grammar school you can admire the Pierist church. The town's skyline is dominated by the Renaissance-style castle from the second half of the 17th century. There used to be a theater inside the castle, and to this day the castle is used for cultural events. The building's facade is covered with graffiti. The Renaissance-style gables have survived, as well as the renovated interiors. The area of southern Moravia is a fertile countryside, a garden, an orchard, and a vineyard. It is the region of where excellent Moravian wine is produced. The metropolis of southern Moravia is Brno, the center of the political, cultural, and economic life of the entire region. In the past, under the reign of Charles IV, Brno became the capital of Moravia, afterwards the seat of the judiciary, and in the 18th century, also the residence of the bishops. Overlooking Brno is Spielberg Castle, perched at the height of 56 meters above the city. It is an early Gothic castle adapted in the Baroque style with mighty walls and bulwarks. The castle was used as a feared jail. As late as World War II, 80,000 members of the resistance passed through it. Today, Spielberg is a national cultural monument and houses the Brno Metropolitan Museum. Another important historical site in Brno is the Church of St. Peter and St. Paul on Petrov Hill. In the 12th century, a Romanesque basilica was built on the site, part of the former fortress, and was replaced in the 14th century by the Gothic church. In the 18th century, Moritz Grimm rebuilt it in the Baroque style. In the course of an extensive renovation between 1904 and 1910, the Baroque nave was regothicized and furnished with two neo-Gothic towers. In front of the facade, an external pulpit was added as a memento to a wandering preacher named Capistrano. The old town, extending at the foot of Petrov and Spielberg, is an urban conservation zone. It includes houses from the Renaissance and Baroque periods, some of which are now used as exhibition halls and galleries. We enter the town of Yehlava through the gate of the Mother of God, adapted in the Renaissance style. Yehlava is the economic and cultural center of Horatsko. Its squares and surrounding streets have preserved a number of Gothic, Renaissance and Baroque style houses. Yehlava represents the typical architectural style of Moravian towns. The center of the main square is marked by a circular fountain. Of the large number of sacred buildings, the Jesuit Church of St. Ignatius is particularly worthy of our attention. 
An important historical site is also the Church of St. James from the second half of the 14th century with a Baroque-style chapel decorated with the figures of miners. Delch, an important cultural and economic center of the southern part of the Czech Moravian highlands, has a city center that is listed as a UNESCO protected historical preserve. The core of the city contains late Gothic fortifications, gates and a series of Gothic, Renaissance and Baroque style houses. Without exaggeration, it can be said that the Telch Square is the most beautiful and picturesque town square in the Czech Republic. Also worthy of attention is the number of arcades, protecting little shops and many statues. The original castle from the 14th century was rebuilt and expanded into a Renaissance-style palace. Bernstein is one of the largest and best preserved of the Czech Republic's more important castles. This castle is a late Gothic fortress with early Gothic elements found in the palace with its galleries and aureoles. Bernstein Castle is connected with the history of one of the oldest and most powerful Moravian noble families, the Lords of Pernstein, especially Wilhelm II, in his time the richest nobleman in the Czech Kingdom. The castle functioned as the administrative center for the area and served as an impenetrable fortress that not even the Swedish armies could defeat in the Thirty Years' War. An important center of southern Moravia, founded at the beginning of the 13th century, is named Znoimo. A prominent church historical site is the Romanesque Rotunda of St. Catherine. The main church of the city is the Gothic Church of St. Michael, with a very valuable interior, dating back to the turn of the 14th and 15th centuries. Beside it is located the two-story Gothic chapel of St. Venceslas. The 13th century castle, rebuilt in the 17th and 18th century into a Baroque palace, today houses the exhibits of the South Moravian Museum. A beautiful view is offered from the town hall and its tower with an observation deck. The center of the winemaking region of southern Moravia is the town of Mikulov. The town was founded in about 1332. Remnants of the town's fortifications have been preserved in the center, as well as a number of Renaissance and Baroque-style townhouses. The local Renaissance-style castle has been adapted in the Baroque style. Lednice, a fairy tale chateau built as a representative summer residence for the Liechtensteins, represents the height of romantic architecture in the Czech Republic. The current form of this amazing structure comes from the mid-19th century, when a massive reconstruction into the neo-Gothic Tudor style took place. The interior is filled with an intricate web and diamond vaults carved out of rare woods and carved period furniture. One of the unique objects in the chateau is a carved and artificially superb self-supporting staircase. There are also many portraits of the Liechtensteins. One of the rarities of the castle grounds is the minaret, the only structure of its kind in Central Europe. The Valtice Chateau was built near a medieval castle acquired by the Liechtensteins and rebuilt into a Renaissance chateau. Valtice thus became the main noble seat of the family. The first floor of the chateau gives the visitor the impression of what it must have been like for the nobility to live in the time of the Baroque. In the interior, there awaits a large number of different furnishings and decorative objects of art. Uherské hradiště is a picturesque town in southeastern Moravia. Of the prominent buildings, the parish church on the main square is particularly noteworthy. Among the interesting historical buildings are also the Baroque Fountain and the Plague Column.
folk art and folklore are an inseparable part of all of Moravia. We can find out on our own by visiting the famous folk festivals at Strajnice. Artistic ensembles sing and dance in folk costumes. Musicians play on original musical instruments. The natural culture and language is thus preserved and passed on from generation to generation. Zlin is the industrial center of the Zlin Highlands. In 1894, Tomasz Batya founded a shoe factory here, where shoes are being produced to this day. The best known Moravian spa is Luhachovice. The Luhachovice spa has 10 springs, the most famous of which being the salty Vincentka. Mineral springs are used for curing respiratory ailments, alimentary tract disorders, diabetes and obesity. The local salty waters have been imbibed by patients since the 17th century. The town experienced its heyday in the 18th and 19th centuries when the first scientific analysis of the springs was carried out and spa buildings were constructed inspired by the traditional architecture of Valašsko. The spa is in great demand by patients from this country as well as from abroad. One of the most luxurious Moravian chateaux is the Kromjeri Chateau. This chateau is a two-story building built on a quadrangular base. A unique part of the chateau is its park. Since the mid-13th century, this noble seat has belonged to the bishops and archbishops of Olomouc. Particularly valuable are the paintings and the wall and ceilings. The high point of the tour is the council chamber with its rich plaster decoration. North of Brno is located the Moravian Karst, the largest and archaeologically most significant karst formation in the Bohemian Massif. The main attraction of the karst is Matsocha, a 138 meters deep chasm, the deepest chasm in the Czech Republic. Tourists can make use of the cable car with which they can reach the area of the Punkva cave. The monumentality of the underground stalactite decoration of various colors and fascinating shapes is admirable. The Moravian Silesian Beskidi Hills are for the most part included in the Beskidi Natural Preserve. The Beskidi Range is made up of three mountain formations, Moravian Silesian Beskidi, Setin Hills and Javorniki. Another tourist attraction is the open-air museum at the Rožnov pod Radhoštem, with a series of timber houses typical of the Valašsko region, barns and a wooden church. Characteristic for this region are widely scattered cottages with small fields. Olomouc is the cultural, industrial and business center of Hana. It is also the city of many historical sites which serve as a reminder of the fact that for a half a millennium it was the capital of Moravia. In the center of the upper square stands the town hall built in 1378. In the 16th century it was rebuilt into a large building with a tall tower and an astronomical clock. The astronomical clock destroyed in 1945, was rebuilt according to a design by Karel Swolinski. 
The column of the Most Holy Trinity on the main square, built in the 18th century, is with its height of 38 meters, the tallest Baroque column in Europe. In the immediate vicinity of the square is located the Gothic Church of St. Maurice, with a rich stone decoration. The Baroque Church of Our Virgin of the Snows was built at the beginning of the 18th century. The picture on the main altar is the work of J.J. Schmidt. The Gothic Madonna originates from around 1380. Of the other historical sites, let us point to the neo-baroque chapel of Jan Tsarkander, built at the beginning of this century. The early Gothic church of St. Michael. The Russian Orthodox church from 1937. The Dome of St. Wenceslas was founded by Prince Svatopluk around the year 1000. Today's form of the dome is the result of a neo-Gothic adaptation. Ostrava, the city of industrial enterprises, has also preserved a number of historical sites, testifying to the wealth of the city. Worthy of note are the well-preserved patrician houses and the former Old Town Hall on the main square. Among the oldest buildings in the city are also several churches and temples. Opava, the industrial, agricultural and cultural center of Czech Silesia, originated before 1195 along an old trade route. Still standing on the main square are the townhouses of the Brewers' houses and the town hall with its dominant Laska tower. Opposite Laska stands the Silesian theater. Among the most valuable historical sites of Opava is the brick Gothic parish church of the Assumption of the Virgin from the 14th century and the Jesuit Church of St. Adelbert. Moravia's highest range is Hrubi Jesenik with Mount Pradjed, 1492 meters in height. In the rich areas full of natural springs are smaller peat bogs marked with nature trails and a large quantity of rare exemplars of plant and animal life. The Jesenik Spa was built as a modern hydrotherapeutic institute which is focused on hydrotherapy for neurotic and psychological conditions, diseases of the metabolism, respiratory and other diseases. Many natural springs are used for effecting cures in combination with a benign climate. Karlova Studanka, another spa and resort in Hrubi Jesenik, invites its visitors to relax, take a breather and draw new strength and energy from walks in the surrounding picturesque countryside. With this, we would like to say goodbye. We hope that these pictures have inspired you to visit the Czech Republic and we look forward to meeting you once more.